Now, as we celebrate this word together in reflection, let us come before the Lord in prayer. Lord, as we give you thanks for your word, hand it down, translated, transcribed from one generation to the next, to be entrusted unto us, that we might do diligently and truthfully with what you have given us, to hand it on in greater measure, in deeper truth and understanding to the generations that will come after us in faith. Lord, help us now in our reflection, that it might be praise unto you as we consider your word, all to your glory and your praise. In Christ we pray. Amen. Jesus Christ does not leave us in the dark. In our journey to the celebration of the birth of Christ, it may seem counterintuitive to read a passage like we did today from the gospel, this revelation that Jesus offers near the conclusion of Mark's gospel, so close to the event of the crucifixion in the narrative. But it provides the roadmap, the big picture, the whole laying out of what God is doing and where we stand. And as we seek for the coming of Christ, we need that perspective. We need the, the thought lodged solidly in our awareness that as much as we celebrate Christ, the babe in Bethlehem, we seek for the Christ of the resurrection and the judgment. For the Messiah of God brings both. Both an end to darkness and a life that is light and life everlasting and eternal. Our procession into that light is both the, the work of the moment and yet it is the journey through all the moments of our lives in learning and growing and forgiving and in revelation and in our calling in Christ as God's people, God's children, just as the wise men. Had, knew that they had a journey before them even as they saw the star announcing his birth to find the Messiah, to continue a journey set down long before us that takes us to that cradle, yes, and unto the life of Christ, but ultimately to the whole purpose of the coming of the Messiah and the fulfillment of all creation. He was there. Very God and begotten, for through him all creation came into being. And he revealed to those that were gathered with him, James, John, and Andrew, there on the Mount of Olives, that the affliction would be severe beyond anything that they were experiencing then. We can only imagine the hardships that the Jews were feeling under the persecution of Rome. We can only imagine the reality of living in, in such raw conditions where ideas of, of, of public sanitation were, were just at their onset, just at their beginning in so many ways. And the reality of daily living and our own mortality was far more before them than we experience now Yet we recognize what it is to be afflicted. But by the same measure, I'm not so sure. But we, in our affliction, in this time of struggle that we are facing, and in our own individual struggles that are ever a part of our reality, we should be at least awakened. That at the time of affliction... There will be many saviors. There will be many that come to say, I will save you from this trial. I will save you from your trouble. And we need to be wary of these messiahs, these Christs, these saviors. We have this trying time. I will not call our day and age just yet the worst that humanity has ever faced, but we should be made alert, sensitive to the dimming light the lack of spiritual light around us. We draw ever close, but Christ does not say these things, and I do not say these things to make you afraid of the day of judgment. Because what is judgment for those who are in Christ but freedom, but joy and celebration, and peace at last? Now I say all these things to remind us, to hope, the darkness of the human soul in the despairing 
is, it is despairing. But Christ offers these words to his followers and to us now, for as Paul says to the Corinthians, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but we are not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of our Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be manifest in our body. That body being the body, but also the, the body, the life of the church, the fellowship of faith. Or as William Shakespeare wrote in the lines of Henry VI, God be praised to that believing souls gives light in darkness, comfort in despair. We're not left there. We're not left in despair. But in the midst of despair, in the midst of darkness, we see a great light. Many times in life we fall into darkness. We fall into the darknesses of apathy, or of ignorance, of self-righteousness or self-importance. In all these ways so caught up in ourselves that we are blind to the reality offered in God because we have in our greatness, turned ourselves into all the God we need. That is darkness. It is emptiness. It is profound loneliness. And it is a blindness. But too often, we don't see until it's far too late, until so much has been missed. We can feel overshadowed by world trends, too. The, the darkness that comes from outside, the political actions over which we feel we have no power or influence, but we doubt and forget the power of God. When confronted with death and our own mortality, with the indomitable struggles that press against our perseverance and our patience, we find no rest. And then, and then our thoughts are drawn to a young wife and her husband, soon to be a family, practically living on the streets, finding room in a cattle shed, the smell of animals, crushed straw, damp earth, and there is that scene in that moment their child is born there. And such low regard for human need should seal our vision of the darkness of humanity. But in that moment, that's where God sets the light. An impossible, not improbable, impossible light, but a light that goes and goes out to all people in all of time and sets the whole universe back into bright and shining motion. And that light in the darkness still has not gone out. Though in the fullness of the force of human cruelty and sin, we sought to snuff it out. Even though the great darkness of death, body, mind, and spirit, death to the very depths of hell, death, total darkness, still. The hope shines. Christ shines. Salvation is bright and real and not anything is going to put it out. The church struggles today. Does that mean heaven's collapsing? That is what the devil wants you to feel. But salvation is the reality we live in. Truth is the reality when all the world is caught up in the fantasy of its own grim logic. God's truth shines. Hope calls us to illumination, to revival, to revitalization, indeed to resurrection. Even as we rejoice in the newborn king, we lift our voices high, our songs and our hearts before all creation, and we shout glory, glory, glory to the king of kings. The sun will be darkened. The moon will not give its light. What is our need for that? 
What is our need for the light of either sun or moon when we look to the new heaven and the new earth where God is our light for all eternity? And while all the world would cower in such darkness, we call to the fulfillment of the, the great we are called to the fulfillment of the great day of the Lord, to see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And the first light of that everlasting day has already shone. It's that flicker of hope in the midst of our darkness. You know, there's a beautiful prayer written by the author of two favorite Christmas carols in the bleak midwinter and love came down at Christmas. Christina Georgina Rossetti wrote in her published prayers, she said, and share this prayer with me. God hardened me against myself this coward with pathetic voice who craves for ease and rest and joys, myself arch traitor to myself, my house friend, my deadliest foe, my clog, whatever road I go, yet one, there he is, can curb myself, can roll the strangling load from me, break off the yoke and set me free. Hope is already yours. For the manger, from the manger to the cross, from the swaddling bands to the burial cloth, God's promise was salvation. Your salvation. Our salvation. And as the Apostle Paul makes so very clear for us, that in that grace and everything ye are enriched by him in all utterance, in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye Come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm unto you the end, that ye be, may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom ye were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom be glory and praise forever. Amen.